All right, in this video, I'm gonna to talk to you guys about how to be neater and faster at painting with a brush. Um, we're gonna talk about brushes real quick, then we're gonna get into technique and some of the things that you can learn to be a little faster, a little neater. I think the best painter is somebody who can paint fast, but also paint really perfect and really clean and not make any mess. And when you walk through a house, you don't have paint on your hands, you don't have paint on the door handles, you don't have paint on anywhere but the walls or whatever substrate you're working on, doors or frames or whatever. So let's get into it. So if you're on a dime store budget, you don't have a lot of money for brushes and you happen to have a Harbor Freight near you, you need a cheap brush that works pretty good. These Avanti brushes are actually pretty good for the money for a cheap brush. These are like five bucks. There's a lot better brushes out there, but I just wanted to point out that if you are new, you maybe you're just painting a bedroom or something like that, this is a great brush for a lot of people like that. Another brush that's good on the cheaper end is this company Proform. Uh, I'm not sponsored by them or anything. I actually um, like these brushes for the price. Uh, one of the best ones is down here. If you see the picture, um, these these ones called uh, Picasso. The Picasso line, uh, those are the angle cut, but they do have a straight, like this one is a straight brush. Um, the Picasso lines are actually really good and a little cheaper than a Purdy. Purdy's are always really good, but they are a little more pricey and a lot of us are looking for bargains. So Proform makes a great brush, even this one here. This is a, I believe this is a nylon combination. Nylon, uh, what's the other thing? There's two different types. Uh, but anyway, nylon polyester, uh, and the best one is always the nylon, I think. Yeah, the polyester is not as good. But anyway, the nylon brushes are a little better. Maybe we have flag ends on them, like this brush has flag ends, but this is a cheap brush by PX. Uh, I only use these when I'm somewhere where, you know, I I don't really care. I'm going to use this because I need to get in between some things, something tight. Um, we'll talk about that a little bit later. One of the best types of bristle, bristles to hold and release paint. And I know this is a small brush. I never usually use. I would not recommend this on anybody's home or anything like that. Most of you guys are house painters. This is a very narrow, small, one and a half inch brush, I think. And... But this bristle right here is called Chinex bristle. And this is for water base and oil based paint. Uh, I would not recommend it for oil base. I only use uh, basically China bristle or uh, one of the black China or uh, China bristle for oil base. Uh, we don't really have oil base anymore in California. So I do have some oil based brushes. For varnish, these white China and the black bristle, I like the black, black bristle a little bit better, but this is what's available. I found this somewhere. I forget how I got it or why I got it with some kind of a deal. So I grabbed a couple of them because they're hard to find now in California. This is a white China, China bristle. It is different than this bristle here. The China X in my right hand is uh, different than this white China. The white China, if you put this sucker in water, it's over. Throw the brush away. But if you get a good three inch straight cut brush for doing walls in white Chinex bristle, man, I'm gonna tell you, you'll find yourself being really fast. Now the disadvantage of these is I find that uh, they do leave a little bit more rope in the brush mark than say, for instance, one of these Picassos, like not this isn't the Picasso, but one of the Proform Picasso, which has the kind of a, I guess it's kind of a golden bristle. Uh, but this one here is actually pretty good too as well. So these are good for cheap. Ch a little cheaper than a Purdy. Uh, but they're not nearly as cheap as one of these. And like I said, these are great for a new painter, a person who just started. Um, you might want to check these out at Harbor Freight. So the next thing is selecting the right tool for the right job. A lot of people just think a brush is a brush. These are all tools. This is a wall brush. This is kind of a narrow wall brush. The best ones are kind of a three quarter inch block, three, three and a half inches. 
Sometimes you can even use a four inch if you're a younger guy. Uh, I'm older and my wrists are, you know, I broke my wrist a while back and I have a, a bad shoulder. So using a four inch brush for an older guy sometimes is not very good. You, know, you just get worn out too quickly with one. But some of you young guys, if you want to really rip, you can get yourself a nice four inch, you know, and learn how to work with that and use a nice straight cut brush for walls. So for walls, the best tool is usually a straight cut. A lot of guys will use an angle because they don't know the difference. The angle does not hold and release as much paint as a wall brush does. So because the angle, it, it really is unnecessary um, to have an angle brush, but a lot of people think they need it because what you need to learn when your brush techniques, and we'll start getting into those now, is when you set your brush down and you go to a corner, so let's just say this is a corner right here. Let's get you up a little closer. You learn this technique of backing your brush up into the corner. So you learn to do this. You see that? You push the brush backwards into the corner. So a lot of times the guys will use one of these brushes because they're like, well, I can just set it into the corner. Okay, you can just set it into the corner. You don't need to do that. You learn to take your brush and back it in back it into the corner. See how that technique of that brush going backwards? That's called backing up your brush, backing it into the corner. And you can actually get a very sharp corner by using this brush by learning how to back it up. It just takes a little bit of practice and uh, that's gonna get your speed up on the flat part of the wall because this works two directions. You can work it this way, you can work it this way, you can flip it upside down where this brush here, the angle tip, you're constantly, you should only be using this one direction and then flipping it over and going this way. I've seen guys do this and they flip it over and go backwards with the brush going this direction. And what happens is they're taking the paint back off the wall. Really a waste of labor. So using an angle cut brush on walls really is not the way to do it. It's to use a straight cut brush, get good at one, get one, work with one for a while, practice with it. It'll help you out a lot. This is a two gallon bucket, also known as a deuce. This one happens to be from Dun Edwards. They sell them at all the paint stores. Um, and one of the reasons you use one of these brushes or these buckets to cut in is because number one, it does not tip over very easily. So when you put your paint in here, it's a little harder to tip over. If you're using a can, that's okay. Uh, using a paint can, sometimes I'll do that. But uh, a paint can to, to cut in with uh, is a little easier to have an accident with. So we usually use these deuces. I know that's get some really bright colors in there. I was painting a sign the other day, so that's what normally I'm doing. I do a lot of that stuff now, high-end stuff, where just I only work a couple days a month. So anyway, technique. Dip it, tap it, scrape it sometimes. So usually what I'll do is I'll dip it, tap it, work that brush. And the tap on the side is what holds the paint on the brush and keeps it from dripping when you're taking it out of the bucket to put it on the wall. So dip it, tap it, dip it, tap it. I use about three times I'll dip it, tap it, and then the fourth time I'll scrape it like this to bring, to always have the paint at about from here to the end of the bristle. So about the last two inches to inch to two inches of the brush is the working part of the brush. You don't want to get paint into the heel, which is down here. If you get paint into the heel, what happens is the brush starts to splay. And when it starts to splay like that, it does not hold and release this paint as well. It doesn't cover as good when you're putting it on the wall. So practice trying to keep that paint right to there at the most and just keep that sucker clean into the heel. So that's one of the techniques to use. So now this technique is something that's gonna take a little bit of practice. This is an advanced brush person. When I see somebody, there's two things that you do when you're brushing. To get more control, you push harder on the brush. Okay, so when you first start brushing, you're pushing on the brush and to, you pull it along, right? And you push on it harder, you get better control, okay? But as you get to be a better painter, 
you start pushing on it less. And the reason you do that, so when I come off of it this direction, I'm very light on my tips, okay? When you're really light on the tips, guess what? You get better coverage. The paint releases from the brush onto the surface in a, a thicker form. So the, the thing to learn as you get better at brushing is to become very light on your tips. Very, you can push lighter and pull just as straight as you did when you first started, which I still watch guys today push on the brush. And what we call that is dragging your brush. That means you're pushing on your brush hard to get the best control and you're dragging the brush because you're pulling the paint back off. You're not releasing it to the surface. When you're going lighter, you're releasing it. When you're going harder, you're getting better control, but you're pulling the paint back off. So that is what the most advanced painters are always working on is trying to release the paint as lightly as they can on the tips. So generally when I cut in, when I'm doing the top here, and let's say I'm going along here and I'm cutting in against, this is the ceiling say, and I'm going along here, okay, I'm gonna do my ceiling cut along the top, work both directions, and then what I'm gonna do last time is gonna dip the brush one more time, dip it, tap it, get it nice and loaded, and then do this direction really lightly, okay? And that's gonna give me the most coverage. So now, the goal is, is my cut in, I wanna try and do that in one coat so that I have all my cut in done in one coat. And then I could do my walls in two because the roller is gonna always take paint back off the wall, especially when you're using a lamb's wool roller. Uh, a synthetic roller will actually release paint to the wall heavier than a lamb's wool roller. It's, it's just a simple thing. If you take a lamb's wool, the lamb's wool soaks the paint up faster. So when it rolls, it also soaks the paint up faster um, than the synthetic roller, which is great for taking it out of the bucket and getting it on the wall. But it also does not get as much coverage because of that reason. So again, to be a faster painter, the bigger brush you have, the biggest brush you could work. I remember back when I first started painting, I used to use a one inch by four inch block brush. That's all my boss would give me. And he, if I picked up this, he'd go, I said, go get a brush. That's not a brush, that's a sash tool. He'd call these sash tools too. He didn't care if it was the angle tip or flat brush. He was like, no, nah, get a brush. And I go back and grab the one inch by four inch block. And that's what I had to use to paint. And I got really good with one of those brushes. And generally when I'm holding the brush, my hands are on the metal part here. I'm not holding the handle. You have better control. When your hands are closer to the bristle, you have better control with the brush. The handle is generally made for two reasons. The handle is actually made for weight balance and for when you have to use it like this to reach something. So, uh, so having one of those shorty handles, I don't like those shorty handles because it doesn't give you the proper weight balance because your hand should be near or on the metal okay when you're brushing so those are all techniques that you can work on over time and maybe you're not using them right now but if you practice these things you'll become a really fast and good brush person i hope you guys like the video and i hope that it helps you learn how to be a better painter our job is to be the best that we can be so you know and be faster and you know, still do an excellent job and make everything look perfect. I'll talk to you in the next one. Please like, share, and subscribe.